very good morning children today i'm going to talk about the topic transportation transportation is the life process by which a substance produced or absorbed in one part of the organism and is carried to every part of its body this is termed as transportation let's discuss transportation in human beings in human beings various substances such as oxygen carbon dioxide hormones etc by specialized systems from one point to another generally the materials are transported to tissue by two specialized systems the first one is the blood vascular system the second one is lymphatic system now let's learn about the blood vascular system a vascular system is a system of tubes which are filled with fluid that is to be transported from one place to another the blood vascular system includes heart and the blood Let's learn about blood. It is a fluid connective tissue which circulates in our body. It is red in color due to the presence of red pigment called as hemoglobin. Heme is iron and the globin is a protein which carries in. It circulates in our body. There are two main components of blood which includes the blood plasma and the blood corpuscles. Let's learn about blood plasma. It is a straw colored slightly alkaline fluid. which is also called as fluid matrix it is a liquid part of the blood which almost constitutes 92% of water and 8% of other solutes the solutes include the plasma proteins the nutrients hormones enzymes inorganic salts gas and other waste products like urea and uric acid now let's learn about blood corpuscles the blood cells which constitutes 45% of the blood There are three types of bloods namely red blood corpuscles or erythrocytes white blood corpuscles or leukocytes platelets or thrombocytes the blood cells are synthesized inside red bone marrow such as in ribs vertebrae and they disintegrate in spleen and liver Now let's learn about red blood corpuscles. It is also called as erythrocytes. The term erythro means red and the cyte means cell. These are circular biconcave non-nucleated cells which are rich in iron containing red pigment called as hemoglobin. They are 7 micrometer in diameter and 2 micrometer in thickness. The lifespan of RBCs is just 120 days in male and 110 days in females. Since these red cells disintegrate in spleen spleen is also called as the graveyard of RBCs when we donate blood the loss of blood can be made quickly by the bone marrow thus the bone marrow is sometimes called as blood bank of the body the hemoglobin present in the red blood cells helps to transport oxygen into the lungs to the body tissues the oxygenated blood from the hemoglobin is called as oxyhemoglobin It is also carries carbon dioxide from the body tissue to the lungs and these hemoglobin are called as carboxyhemoglobin. Generally the count of RBCs in male is around 5.2 million per millimeter cube of blood whereas in female it is around 4.5 million per millimeter cube of blood. Now let's learn about white blood corpuscles. These are also called as leukocytes. Leuco means colorless. These are colorless nucleated blood cells which vary in size and shape a normal human being has around 5000 to 8000 leukocytes per millimeter cube of blood the number increases in presence of infection they have a lifespan of 12 hours to 1 day these cells fight infection and protect us from diseases they exhibit amoeboid movement they protect the body against invading microorganisms and remove dead cells from the body usually these are either spherical or irregular in shape white blood cells are broadly classified into two types agranulocytes and granulocytes agranulocytes are of two types namely monocytes and lymphocytes whereas granulocytes are of three types namely eosinophils neutrophils and basophils The WBCs are also called as soldiers because they protect the body from the pathogens and other foreign particles. They also produce a chemical called as antibodies to fight against the infection and provide immunity. Now, let's learn about platelets. These are also called as thrombocytes. 
thrombo means clotting these are colorless or non nucleated cell fragments formed in the bone marrow they do not possess nucleus they help in blood clotting or coagulation of blood during a cut or a wound they have a life span of around 5 to 9 days when the tissue is wounded it starts bleeding and the blood flow out through it if it is not checked it may cause to excessive loss of blood sometimes the loss of blood may even lead to death but the body has a natural mechanism of preventing the loss of blood by forming a blood clot the clot contracts and solidifies and closes the injury this results in the expulsion of a liquid called as serum the main functions of blood include the hormone carrier oxygen transport waste product transport maintaining water balance carbon dioxide transport nutrient transport regulating blood temperature maintaining the ph of the blood body defense and property of clotting now let's learn about the human circulatory system the mechanism of circulation of blood throughout the body is known as blood circulatory system the blood circulatory system in humans consists of a pumping organ which is nothing but the heart and its vessels called as blood vessels there is another transport system in human beings namely the lymphatic system usually the substances are transported through two different liquids namely blood and the lymph let's learn about the blood vessels the blood vessels are thin tubes which carry blood throughout our body there are three types of blood vessels namely arteries veins and capillaries what are arteries they are thick walled elastic blood vessels which carry blood from the heart to various part of the body the main artery called as aorta carries oxygenated blood from right ventricle to all parts of the body except lungs but the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to lungs for purification is called the pulmonary artery the thick walls of the arteries allow the blood to flow inside with high blood pressure when the blood is poured into an artery it expands and then contracts partially making the lumen narrow what is vein they are thin walled and less elastic which carry blood from all parts of the body back to the heart blood flows smoothly and slowly inside the veins because it does not flow under high pressure there are walls in veins which prevent the backflow of the blood the main vein which is vena cava carries the deoxygenated blood from all parts of the body except lungs and flows into the heart but the only vein which carries oxygenated blood from lungs to the heart is the pulmonary vein veins have a wider lumen than arteries what are capillaries capillaries are narrow thin walled tubes which connect arteries and veins since the walls of capillaries are thin walled various dissolved substances like food oxygen etc present in the blood enters into the body cells through these capillaries simultaneously the waste substances like the carbon dioxide enter the capillaries thus the exchange of materials takes place between the body cells and the blood the oxygenated blood from the arteries enter the capillaries and the deoxygenated blood from the capillaries enters into the veins joined to the other end of the capillaries now let's learn about the human heart it is a hollow muscular organ roughly triangular or conical in shape its average weight is 300 grams in males and 250 grams in females the size of the heart is same as our clenched fist it is made up of special muscles called as cardiac muscles it is reddish brown in color it is situated between the two lungs in the middle of the thoracic cavity resting over the diaphragm it is covered by a tough narrow fluid filled membranous two layered sac called as pericardium the pericardium helps to reduce friction between the heart wall and the surrounding tissues Now let's learn in detail the internal structure of a human heart. Heart has two pumps which work independently. The left side of the heart pumps blood into various part of the body whereas the right side of the heart pumps blood only to the lungs. It is divided into four chambers. 
to prevent the mixing of oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood the four chambers include two upper chambers and two lower chambers the upper chambers are called as auricles or atria whereas the lower chambers are called as ventricles the auricles are small and thin walled whereas the ventricles are large and thick walled the two auricles receive blood from the two main veins the two ventricles transport blood to the lungs and also to all parts of the body there are walls between the left atrium and the left ventricle called as bicuspid valve or mitral valve and between the right atrium the right ventricle called as tricuspid valve the bicuspid valve has two flaps whereas the tricuspid valve has three flaps the valve helps the blood to flow in one way direction and prevent the backflow thus the blood flows from auricle to ventricle and not in the reverse order now let's learn about the functioning of the heart when the muscles of all four chambers of heart are relaxed the oxygenated blood from the lungs is poured into the left auricle of the heart by the pulmonary vein when the left auricle contracts the oxygenated blood is pushed into the left ventricle through a bicuspid valve when the left ventricle contracts the oxygenated blood enters into the aorta and goes into various parts except lungs when the oxygenated blood passes through the capillaries of the body organs they give up oxygen to the body cells and becomes deoxygenated all the same time the carbon dioxide produced during respiration as waste material enters into the blood here the blood becomes the deoxygenated blood or the carbon dioxide rich blood the deoxygenated blood from the body organs enter into vena cava and it is carried to the right auricle there are two types of vena cava the superior and the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava brings the blood from the bottom part of the body whereas the superior vena cava brings the blood from the superior part of the body when the deoxygenated blood reaches the right auricle it contracts and the deoxygenated blood is pushed into right ventricle through a tricuspid valve when the right ventricle contracts the deoxygenated blood is pumped into the lungs through the pulmonary artery in the lungs the deoxygenated blood releases carbon dioxide absorbs oxygen and becomes oxygenated again the oxygenated blood is again sent to the left auricle by the pulmonary vein for circulation thus the whole process is repeated continuously and the blood keeps circulating in our body without stopping it also helps to remove the waste products formed in the body cells now children have you observed that the blood is entering the heart twice what type of circulation is this called it is called as the double circulation when the blood passes through the heart twice it is called as double circulation the double circulation includes two components mainly the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation what is pulmonary circulation when the blood passes from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart this process of circulation is called as pulmonary circulation it involves lungs pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein what is systemic circulation when the blood passes from the heart to various other parts of the body and then come back to heart this process of circulation is called as systemic circulation let's learn about the double circulation in other animals in warm blooded animals the heart is four chambered with the auricles and two ventricles hence the right side and the left side of the heart is completely separated to prevent the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood this separation helps to provide a high supply of oxygen to the body cells to produce a lot of energy this energy is important for the warm blooded animals to maintain their body temperature now let's discuss about the cold blooded animals in these animals the heart is three chambered heart with two auricles and one ventricle thus the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood gets mixed and provide lesser energy or lesser supply of oxygen to the body cells which also produces lesser energy now let's learn in fish in fish the heart is two chambered with one auricle and one ventricle here the heart pumps deoxygenated blood from the gills for oxygenation 
does. The oxygenated blood from the gills is supplied to the body parts of the fish where oxygen is used and the carbon dioxide makes it deoxygenated. This oxygenated blood enters the heart again and gets pumped into gills for oxygenation. Thus, the flow of blood of a fish is single circulation because the blood passes through the heart only once in one complete cycle of a body. Now, let's discuss about the term called as heartbeat. The pumping of blood is the most vital function of the heart and this pumping action results into a beat called heartbeat. The heart beats continuously throughout life of an individual. The contraction of heart is called as systole and the relaxation of heart is called as diastole. The sequence of events which takes place during the completion of heartbeat is called as cardiac cycle. Thus, heartbeat can be defined as the process of rhythmic contraction and relaxation of heart that results in pumping of blood in our body. Usually heart beats about 70 to 72 times in a minute in a resting age whereas the number of beats increases during excitement and physical exercises. A doctor uses stethoscope to listen to the heartbeat of the patient. Now let's discuss about the blood pressure. The pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of the auricles is called as blood pressure. It is measured by the instrument called as sphygmomanometer. When the heart contracts, the maximum pressure at which the blood is pumped from the heart to iota is called as systolic pressure. Similarly, the minimum pressure at which the heart relaxes is called as diastolic pressure. Thus, the valve of diastolic pressure is always lower than the systolic pressure. The value of blood pressure is always measured in mmHg which is called as millimeter per mercury. The normal blood pressure of a person in systolic pressure is 120 mmHg whereas the diastolic pressure should be 80 mmHg. However, the blood pressure of a person varies from time to time also with age. When the blood pressure is more than 150 by 90, it is termed as high blood pressure or hypertension. This may be due to an increase in the flow of blood. When the value is lesser than 110 by 70, it is called as low blood pressure or hypotension. Thank you children.